Okay, so today I want to go, want to go over really super quickly is how do you figure out how much your large language model application is actually going to cost to run per message, right? So say if you're going to go away and you know invest in a, building a SaaS product, you would like to know you know how much is it going to cost per message or per run so that you can get a good understanding of if your product's going to be profitable or not. The way OpenAI charges is they charge for your input as well as your output. So if we come and look here, so for GPT, it's charging three cent for 1K input tokens and then 6K for output tokens. A lot of people get this mixed up and think it only charges you for the output, but actually it's the input as well. And then Turbo is basically like just half as cheap for, for the input and even less for the output. But what is like a token that sort of doesn't mean any sense so a good rule of thumb is one token is like points of words so in this case 1000 tokens is about 700 words now let's take for example you want to build something like character.ai and character.ai is basically you have a bunch of different personalities and then you can basically chat with them and what basically this is doing, I mean, characters.ai, apparently they have their own large language models, but if you wanted to build this with, you know, using OpenAI, ChatGPT, you would have something like this. What you would have is basically a system prompt, a chat history, and then the user message. And for this, actually, the main cost that you're actually going to be getting is not typically your output, per se, but your input. Because your input is where you're going to have their personality, their system prompt, and I've defined it here and sort of the size of the prompt and, and what that will look like. The user input will be really small. I mean, if we look here, you know, mine was two words, but I can imagine, you know, the chat, you know, their system message is fairly lengthy to be able to tell, you know, for ship depth, you know, prompt for ship.ai. And I'll give you a, like an example here just in the code. So this is code that for my research agent, right? This is the system message for the research agent, right? It's a pretty big system message. So your system message goes at the top, right? And then you have your chat history. So it can, you know, your large language models sort of knows what's happened in the past. And, but that's not going to be too big. Usually you cut it off around four to five messages. And then you have your user input. But all in all, your input is actually going to be way bigger than your output because you have to send the system message every time. What an, an LLM only just takes stuff in and then completes it. So it would actually, you know, this is my AI girlfriend code, right? So this is a, a good like example. So you have your system message, which is like super long. Then you have your chat history. This is just a, a variable way that I'm inputting it. You have your chat history. You then have the human input, which is going to be like one line, right? And then you have like best friend colon. And basically like this is the way you're telling it, like complete this, complete this, this sort of this chat history kind of thing. You pass that to your LLM and then you get your output. And, you know, depending on the, the output, you know, as long as you're not trying to get it to generate loads and loads of context, your, your output is also going to be really small. So actually, like most of the cost is the system message. But this is sort of how you can break down the and sort of understand like what is going to be the cost per message. So you need to figure out how big is your system message going to be? And then like how far back in you know the chat history are you going to do it? Are you going to give it the last 10 messages? Are you going to give it the last 20 messages? But if you, you know, figure out a number, say three or four or five, this can be very quickly defined and your user input isn't going to be more than, you know, two or three sentences. So you can sort of calculate this and maybe this is, you know, 200, 300 words. And then your output is going to be, a, you know, no bigger than 30 words. We can come to this pricing. So let's say we use chat GPT-4. We can divide this by 750 words. So it's this number per word times that by, let's say, 200 so it's going to be just under a pence for ink for generating input. And then it's going to be, you know, if it's 20 to 30 words, it's going to be absolutely negligible. So it's about one pence per conversation if you're using a very simple architecture. Now, this does get a bit complicated when you start using agents. And you're going to start using agents a lot more in many different complex ways. Simple chains, you know, like I just showed you here. And you know what I mean by a chain, this is like a chain, you just have one input, 
is a very simple chain. You just one input, one output. But sometimes you might you might actually pass this output like through another you know large language model uh, to get the output. Maybe it's like checking the output and then re outputs uh, like a better output. So agents are a little bit harder to figure out. You know what? How much of this is going to cost me? Because depending on the agent and depending on the prompt, sometimes they can run for like two, three, four, five cycles, or sometimes they'll run one cycle and figure out the arm. And you know, an agent basically, if you look at these diagrams, it's basically a large language model that has a loop. It just keeps looping until it finds, figures, you know, out the the answer. And then this is, you know, an example of a, a React agent, one of the most common sort of best agents sort of out there. And, you know, this is actually sort of how it, it you know, it, it works, right? So this is the entire internal thought. So you have your input, right, which is going to be the question. And then this is all the internal functions. So it's calling the large language model, like, constantly. It's having a thought. It's having an action. It having, you know, it, it's outputting observations. So the this, these are all outputs. And there's also another part of it, which is the, the input, which is, you know, the system message telling the agent how to be, you know, what sort of agent it's going to be. And this is a little bit more, you know, difficult to figure out, you know, how much this is actually going to cost. For example, this research agent that has two tools to do a bunch of web scraping, this sometimes costs me anywhere between sort of 10p to 50p to actually just run once. And that's because it can actually go to many sites. So one thing you can actually do is tell an agent how many sort of max iterations to do before returning an answer so it doesn't go any further. So I've hit it to about five and I've not, in sort of correlation, I've not seen it go above about 50, 50 cents in, in cost. But really the only way to actually figure out how, how expensive these agents are going to be is to basically run the agent and then track the amount of tokens used. And this is where I'm coming on to the last part of the video. What you can use is a tool called Lang Smith, which is like the commercial part of, you know, the Langchain code. It's basically a, a program, a, a sort of a, an AI IDE that when you run your Langchain code, it also does a bunch of logging. So you can sort of do a bunch of debugging. And what you can actually do is just see how much tokens your agent is using up and your chain is using up. And then you can sort of do an average over a bunch of agent runs. So I hope that made that a little bit clearer for you. If you would like to work with me on a project, there's the an email in the description. Please feel free to reach out.